Okay, and we're back. Quite an intense first two hours. We're going to move into hour number three now with uh, Yoichi Shimatsu, who is coming to us from beautiful Thailand this week, and he's standing by down there. Let's find out how our connection is. Can you hear me, my friend? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, not well, but okay. Oh, you, you mm-hmm. sound you sound great. Good. Yeah, yeah, fine. All right. Um, here are the here's the latest for all of you who have not had a chance to follow what's going on at Fukushima, which of course is, uh, well, we'll call it denoticed over here, as they say in the UK. It's not to be talked about by the mainstream controlled Zionist media. But here are the latest headlines for you, just to bring you up to speed a little bit. Molten corium apparently seen melting out of one of the busted, wrecked Fukushima reactors coming right out of the bottom of it, a new videotape. Uh, take a look at that. Strontium-90 levels soar again at Fukushima. This, this situation is in such flux over there, it's not funny. Fukushima radiation continues to pour into the Pacific. If you remember, and I believe we mentioned this last week, the IAEA went and inspected what's left of the uh, Fukushima Daiichi power station, and told the uh, TEPCO officials that they saw nothing wrong at all with dumping all, not part of, all of the radioactive water into the ocean. All right, here's another one. New nuclear leak at destroyed Fukushima plant. So they continue to find things as the plant continues to literally disintegrate. Uh, Things are falling apart. They are literally decaying day by day, hour by hour. Uh, Japan has no sane nuclear waste disposal plan. Well, n- surprise, neither do we. Neither does anybody else. Uh, tritium also spiking at Fukushima in their groundwater measuring locations. There's much more there. It's at the center column at the top of headlines, and you can write... Uh, Go to the right side and then see the whole archive going back almost four years now. We're coming up uh, in March on uh, the four-year anniversary of uh, the greatest tragedy in recorded human history. All right, what's new with you? Yeah, well, this steam coming uh, out of the ground, we've been predicting that these things would happen. The ground is becoming more smoke-like. There's a lot more vents there. You know, the corium is burning through... Uh, Hot steam and uh, hot water is obviously bubbling up. Yeah. Uh, uh, we're, we're, yeah, we're uh, seeing a lot of snow melt right now. So those huge snowstorms, a lot of snow melt coming down through the underground streams into the plant, uh, forcing water pressure up, upward. And that's pushing a lot of that uh, steam that's around the quarry and is pushing it up to the surface. Highly pressurized steam. Very, very dangerous for the workers, by the way, there, because, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, it's going to get over everything. It's going to get into your breathing space. It'll, it'll penetrate everything there. Quite cold there still in Japan, so the steam will have a, a effect of condensing all, also all over the place. Okay, it won't be too much release in the atmosphere, but it'll condense all over. So it's going to be deadly for the workers. The other problem is the seven, uh, the spike in spontium, as you mentioned, in the groundwater. Uh, that's uh, risen by 70 times, so, you know, 70. That's not one seven. We're talking about seven zero, 70 times uh, above the previous level. Massive spike in strontium, which can only be explained by one thing, and that is the release of untreated water on Fukushima, which basically was more or less approved by the IAEA, the International Oh, yeah. Atomic Energy Agency yeah. inspection. They sent 15 staff members there to Fukushima last week, led by the director of their waste disposal and fuel cycle division, a uh, Spaniard named Juan Carlos Lentino. And uh, if I can just quote him from uh, an IAEA press release, he said, well, first he said Japan needs to come up with a more sustainable solution for all the wastewater that's gathered on site. He's noted that there's a lot of space there at Fukushima, number one, but it's <laughs> running out. You have space there. And they, then this is, uh, what he did. He advised, he advised that TEPCO should consider discharging treated water into the ocean. And yeah. there was more treated water yeah. in the ocean. Yeah. 
knowing full well he was there, he seen the Areva equipment, you know, the big French company, their system broke down, the Toshiba system broke down, the current one from Curion is basically in test phase, you know, no one's talking about that, I'm sure that's not working very well, despite all the major promises out of those people from Hanford, mm -hmm. they certainly cannot clean the water running into the Columbia River, I don't know how they plan to, uh, you know, cleanse the water of uh, radionucleotide out of Fukushima, so knowing full well that the treatment systems to remove radioactive substances, isotopes from wastewater have failed, he's still urging the discharge of water. And if we, if anyone, if anyone who lives along the Pacific Coast, anyone who cares about marine life, all the people who bought into that whole that Greenpeace program to save the seals, you know the whole Discovery Channel program of uh, Mr. Watson there of you know, stopping the Japanese whalers to save the whales, sail the seas. Mm -hmm. um, this man is saying, this is, this is a direct quote of the IAE, the United Nations Agency in Charge of Atomic Power. This guy's mm -hmm. a nuclear engineer. Mm -hmm. He does, deals with wastewater systems all around the world, and nuclear plants all around the world. He said, controlled discharge. That's a real uh, amazing term, huh? Controlled Discharge. No, we're dumping water into the ocean. That's a controlled discharge. Was something that is happening <laughs> every day yeah. worldwide yeah. in most nuclear plants. Yeah. And he adds this release of water from nuclear plants in the ocean has negligible impact on the environment. Unbelievable. This, I mean, uh, we need uh, a nuclear engineer with 20 plus years of experience to tell us it's okay to dump water out of nuclear plants in the ocean like that was done at San Onofre that killed off the sea lion population there that's killing off the sea life there that's using the fish that you know fishermen commercial fishermen and mm -hmm. sports fishermen gather yeah this man is talking you know these these are fantasies that are basically fundamental well, we, we, lies we, we, in the we, interest yeah. of the nuclear industry and nothing but lies. Nothing. He is, he nothing is just lies. incompetent. He's either he's absolutely corrupt and possibly incompetent on top of that and should be fired and replaced. I mean, you know, uh, the head of the United Nations should fire these people who say these things. So these are just bald, outright yeah. lies. It's a disgrace to, you know, uh, any shred of honor left at that corrupt body called the United Nations. I, I mean, uh, this guy has to be gotten rid of. Uh, the whole United Nations needs to be gotten rid of, uh, Yoshi. It's all, yeah. it's all rotted it, to the it, core. Yeah, it is doing no good at all. It's no, no. None. Good. Whenever you hear and these... When, it, go ahead. Yeah, huh? Whenever, whenever oh, you hear yeah, these yeah. clowns... Is it uh, any wonder... Yeah. Is it any wonder that a professional fraudster, the Spaniard Lentijo, Mm -hmm. Could be promoted in 2012, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, yeah, by the director general of the IAEA, Yukia Amano, okay, he was appointed director of the IAEA, mm -hmm. uh, the man, top man there. Uh, this is a watchdog for the nuclear industry that's supposed to protect the world public from nuclear disasters. Yukio Amano, uh, former Japanese diplomat, he's still registered with the Japanese. Foreign Ministry, okay, mm -hmm. joined the Foreign Ministry 1972 and directly went when he joined from Tokyo University into the Science Division and into the Nuclear uh, Division of the Japanese Foreign Ministry. This is 1972, okay, mm -hmm. and I read you an internal document, okay, a secret internal document that was exposed by Mainichi Shimbun, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. from 1969. Three years before Mr. Amano, the current head of IA, joined uh, oh. the, I, uh, the the uh, well, the joined the foreign ministry, a freshman yeah. at the foreign ministry, yeah. with this new policy come in. I'll read you quote. Okay. This is from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Okay, mm -hmm. internal memo, top level. Okay, quote for the time being. Okay, and we're talking about this is thirty years ago. Got it. We will maintain the policy of not possessing nuclear weapons. That's the official policy. While keeping the economic 
and technical potential for production of nuclear weapons. While seeing to it that Japan will not be interfered with. Unquote. That is another word. Wow. The foreign ministry is in charge of making sure no one in the world dares interfere with Japan's nuclear program, nuclear that's, weapons program. Okay. That's a stunning through bribery, document. Through threats, through removing people, through, you know, uh, through a hundred different devices. No one in, in the official dumb at the United Nations in the United States and the G7 dares, dares probe into what Japan is doing at Fukushima and why the actor three blew up with weapons-grade plutonium. See, this is the statement more than 30 years ago, and the head of the IEA, IAEA was hired three years after that memo was written. That was over 40 years ago. Yeah. 40. 40 years ago, yeah, 69, excuse me, 60, uh, 40 years ago, 1969. Whenever you, whenever this you hear, man, whenever you hear these. whole career has yeah. been there, spent covering up Japan's nuclear weapons program, That's and right. he's the big boss at the place that is supposed to be enforcing, enforcing yeah. a non-nuclear co- uh, country to abide yeah. by the non-proliferation treaty. The yeah. wolf is inside the hen house, for sure, and this is why this is the third visit by the uh, IAEA to Fukushima and the third absolute whitewash uh, turning uh, night into day there. And uh, with absolute lies, the whole lot of them have to be fired. This what? agency is oh, yeah. absolutely corrupt. It has to be bulldozed. All the people there should be put before international war crimes trial well, for should. crimes against humanity and against the environment. Yeah. And... An entirely new non-proliferation structure needs to be created from the ground up with completely new people. I wish I could this say there was a chance that's going to happen. Whenever you hear these clowns use the word sustainability or sustainable, uh, you know who they're working for. You know where their hearts and minds yep. lie. They're, uh, they're career criminals. Well, it, will, it will happen. It will happen. It's going to happen yeah. too late, unfortunately. Yeah, it will I, happen after an all life. When people started dying as fast as marine mammals, when people across Asia, across the Pacific, when people in North America and Canada and the USA start falling, dropping like the sea lions are dropping, that's when change will happen. But it's going to be awful. It's going to take that. You're by right. that time, the criminals yeah. will be hiding out somewhere. They'll of be course. gone. They'll be hiding oh, yeah. out, leaving the mess to the next generation. They'll be of in their rabbit holes. Who holes. don't have the budget or the tools to deal with it. Totally correct. You're totally correct. It'll take yeah. something like that before there is any action at all. Uh, I couldn't agree more. And, you know, the stuff that Dana's seen of mass extinction, so as you say, this is the greatest tragedy. This is the biggest extinction event in human history, the biggest human-caused extinction event. This yeah. is the biggest human-caused climate change event. Okay, yeah. never mind this other stuff, fossil fuel. This stuff has altered the weather of people in the... Uh, Eastern states, the United States haven't noticed this, some amazing, major <laughs> changes in the jet stream. <laughs> they noticed. The jet stream. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah noticed. Radiation, powerful force that never should have been taken out of the burial in that deep rock where it belongs. It was only when that radiation was covered by sediment did life begin to emerge on this planet. And the idiots who dug it up are now killing all those millions of years of evolution it took for life to, to develop into these, you know, thousands of species uh, that Dana has been seeing off the coast of Vancouver, off the coast of Canada and Alaska. Well, the, the 6,000... of years for that development. That's, yeah, the 6,500 species or so that he hasn't been seeing off the coast of British yep. Columbia. They're gone. And yeah. uh, we don't yeah. know how much is uh, left, if anything, much at all in the Pacific Ocean. Hundreds of millions of years for those to evolve, yeah, to develop, exactly. to find their niches. That four years to wipe them out. That's uh. I mean, uh, these are criminals. I mean, worst. These are the worst criminals uh, ever seen in human history. I mean, we've seen Genghis Khan and all that. No, those no, they're, guys they're monsters. They're not. Mo- yeah. With the nuclear. These, These people are, they're dangerous. monsters, uh, Yoshi. They're monstrosities. Yeah. They're not human. Yeah. They don't, they're sociopaths. They're crazy. Uh, they, I don't, I run out of words. Let me see if, uh, Dana Durnford is online with us tonight. Are you there, Dana, by any chance? Yes, Jeff. Thank you. 
I was just listening, you know, it's so shocking. and People can't wrap their minds around it when you talk to them. They really, truly can't understand what, what's going on. They, they give up right away. They say, oh, well, what are you going to do? Die. Like, uh, you know the answer to that is? Die. That's what you're going to do. I, I tell people, it's not like a heart attack in your sleep and you, and you just die, you never wake up. This is, you liquidate your assets and you go kicking and screaming the whole way through. Yeah. And, you know, th this is an extinction event. There's no doubt about it. Uh, the last three days I got to the outside of some major islands. Big hits, uh, 4,000 pictures. Yeah. And uh, today I had to take the boat out of the water when I got back toward a transducer off, the sounder off. This was a little tricky getting back through the group of islands today. But I can't find anything out there. It's so boring. It's sickening how boring. It's so quiet, so still. And there's just nothing to take a picture of. <laughs> no <laughs> birds, no fish, no there's nothing. No nothing. I can't see anything out there. I mean, it's truly shocking to see it completely gone. And so the North Coast got hit a lot harder, even though the, the south part of Canada, West Coast, is mm -hmm. pretty naked, 26 species mm -hmm. uh, in any given area if you were lucky. But this is naked up here. It's really something else. And I've seen one eagle, and he's just sitting there on all these uh, rocks, and there's all these islands all around him. They're all naked, every one of them. And so it makes you wonder, you know, how could he even survive just a single eagle all by himself? It's so shocking that <clears throat> the world, I think, might change the game, you know. You can't hide it much longer. No, you can't. Can but, it? you know, when you when you own the media, Dana, yeah. you just yes. don't talk about it. And no. when you don't talk about it, it doesn't exist in the minds of the sheep. They just don't know any better. And even those that do can't, as you said, literally begin to wrap their minds around the dynamic of this catastrophe. I don't, it's a, it's beyond a catastrophe. It's that bad. And only until, as Yoshi said, people start dying in the streets, and they will in time, slow burn, they'll just fall over, not in one day, but they'll fall over in a, of an accumulative radioactive death. Uh, they're going to have cancer. There'll be all kinds of diseases. Maybe then somebody will say, well, gee, where's the EPA? Why haven't we had reports from the Canadian government about this? And then it'll get swept away again. No, we're just having global warming, uh, ocean acidification, some new virus in the ocean water is causing the sea life to die over off. Over I, I saw, where did I see, Yochi? I sent you the story today. Uh, they're blaming it on, yeah. uh, what was it? I can't remember. A certification no, or something. Uh, no, natural defense, yeah. natural, uh, uh, natural resource defense council. Yes. Uh, yes. NRDC, very famous NGO, more than one million members. Uh, I think it was created by that fellow Lester Brown. It's run by a Harvard professor. I mean, excuse me, professor from Columbia Law School, uh, named Lerner. Okay. Uh, he's basically in that faculty there with uh, Alan Dershowitz. This is the Zionist law school in the world. Okay, there's not there's not a more Zionist law school in Israel than there is at Columbia. Okay, uh -huh. and he's out of there and he's talking about oh, uh, acidification of the ocean caused by the burning of fossil fuel, carbon dioxide, and all. Well, if that's the case, you know, I mean, I study chemistry. Show me the red tide. Okay. Where is all the algae buildup? We don't see algae. Water's getting cleaner. Yeah. Okay. If there is this acidification, yeah. Yeah. The sea should be a giant muck, a huge, you know, sewer of algae. It's it clean. should be. It's clear. Yeah. Yeah. Right. No, I no mean, bacteria. You know, oil, everything vinegar, else. They love the acid environment. Grass grow taller. Okay. Acid. Yeah. You know, uh, plants, animals. They love acid. You know, they love it. You know, they don't like the alkali. You know, you go to the desert, it's alkali salts out there. Yeah. They don't like it. Nuclear, uh, nuclear, uh, isotopes, alkali. That's why life forms hate the alkali. They, they thrive on the acidity. You know, it's no problem there. So 
acidification of the ocean is the most absurd baloney, not coming from scientists, but lawyer from Columbia Law School. Alan Dershowitz is school, and everyone knows what Alan Dershowitz is. You know, he's a man who wrote In Defense of Zionism. You know, oh, the Palestinians are killing us, Israel. We have to fight back because we're facing all these evil terrorists coming through every window and door. So, you know, don't blame us if we have to send F-16s out there and drop bombs on apartment blocks. Okay? Well, don't, this don't, is a man yes. who thinks like this. Lerner is part of that faculty, doesn't say a peep, you know, uh, and uh, he's coming out with this stuff. Why? What is the connection between Zionism and the nuclear bomb? Was not the nuclear bomb and the creation of the nuclear bomb connected with the creation of the state of Israel. Was it not? Did not those two things happen uh, at, at precisely the same time? Okay? So you understand why the folks at Columbia Law are so eager to take the light off of Fukushima, off of nuclear, off what is happening in the Ukraine, off of what's happening at the, the continued leakage of San and over and off of Hanford because they've got a huge stake in atomic weapons. Just as we saw at Fukushima on the very day of March 11, 2011, an Israeli team, security team from the Daimona nuclear plant, this is the Israeli bomb factory, with that Fukushima number one setting up security systems, all right? Correct. They have a stake in this, folks. Yeah. And we got to wake up to the point of what this nuclear bomb is all about, okay? Very, it's about very, uh, domination. Very grim Ideological, stuff. All true. political, economic, financial domination. It is global terrorism. And there's no other way to talk about nuclear weapons than as global terrorism. Uh, terrorize everyone on this planet. Indeed. All right, we have to take a break. We'll come right back. Please remember what uh, Yochi just said about acid and the lie about acidification in the oceans caused by global warming and viruses in the ocean killing off life forms. It's all a gigantic lie. All of it. Black is white, up is down, and it's all a con job. And we'll be right back. Okay, let's get right back uh, to business. Uh, Dana Dernford is standing by, our special guest up in the wilds of British Columbia, off the coast, somewhere out there amongst those islands or near the shoreline, looking and looking uh, in vain for signs of, uh, of life as it used to be. It's gone up there now. One eagle. Uh, nothing along the shores. Tide pools devoid of life. You heard Yochi mention this uh, piece of... Uh, garbage i sent him today uh, it's called let me i've got to read a little bit of this uh this you, folks really please listen carefully this is very important it's uh <clears throat> it's entitled new study rapid ocean acidification threatens coastal economies in 15 states anticipated impacts more widespread than previously believed Major threats seen to oyster, scallop, clam industries in California, Connecticut, Florida, Louisiana, Massachusetts, Maine, Maryland, North Carolina, Oregon, Washington, etc., etc. Now, this is very clever the way they do this, uh, although very simple to see through if you just understand what's really happening. The first nationwide vulnerability assessment for ocean acidification published today in Nature Climate Change, shows that coastal communities in 15 states, it depends on the nation's approximately $1 billion worth of shelled mollusks, are at long-term economic risk. Okay, now, get this quote. Ocean acidification has already cost the oyster industry in the Pacific Northwest nearly $110 million and jeopardized about 3,200 jobs, said Julia Ekstrom, who was lead author of the research while a scientist with 
the Natural Resources Defense Council, the NRDC, and now is at the University of California, Davis. She said also, our research shows for the first time that many communities around the U.S. face similar risks. Here's the kicker. The report reads, Ocean acidification is the result of oceans absorbing the growing amounts of carbon dioxide produced by burning fossil fuels. Acidifying waters make it more difficult for creatures with calcium carbonate shells or skeletons, including mollusks, crabs, and corals, to grow their shells and survive. The research study co-authored by scientists at the NRDC, UC Davis, the Ocean Conservancy, and Duke University, and collaborators from nine additional institutions integrated physical, economic, and social data into an assessment of various regions' overall vulnerability. I'm going to stop there. This is such crap, it beyond, it's beyond my ability to explain it to you. I, I could spend two hours talking about this stuff. Let me simplify it. When we talk about your health on this program for years and years, we talk about the human body not doing well when your blood is in an acid condition. Everything loves to grow in an acidic condition. We tell you to become alkaline. And when people simply change their blood chemistry and go alkaline, in many cases, catastrophic illnesses and diseases go away. It's that simple. So as Yochi said, if the oceans really were suffering from gross acidification, they'd be crawling with life. There's nothing out there, folks. Very little left. Uh, anything to add to that, yeah, Yochi? This, uh, this, Jeff, you're, yeah, Jeff, you're absolutely correct. I mean, when I talked about the kill-off of all the mollusks, all the shellfish uh, in Tokyo Bay, their yep. shells were fine. There's nothing wrong with the shell. They died from inside. You know, it's their flesh that's dying, not the shell. Yep. And, you know, I live upstream from uh, you know, my house, my radioactive house. It was, is, whatever left of it, you know, uh, upriver from there in the middle of massive limestone mountains. No shortage of limestone, uh, of lime, you know, calcium, moving yeah. in the Tokyo uh, Bay. Tons yeah. and tons of, you know, the place is littered with shellfish now. There is, to tell you, there is no problem with calcium carbonate, none whatsoever. Something else is killing the flesh, the muscle, the muscle, nervous tissue, okay? Look the, what it did to starfish. Uh, 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 it uh, dissolved the, them. The cell wall of it. Yeah, it's something completely different. They're not dying. You're not seeing these shellfish with a lot of holes in them. And I'll ask, the fishermen out there, okay, the, the uh, oyster farm, people who own rust oyster farms and who, uh, you know, uh, put clams, you know, uh, dig clams out of the sand. Do you see a lot of whole dinner clam shells now? I'll tell you no. But you will see they're dying from the inside. You will see, I guarantee it, these bivalves, like I saw in Tokyo Bay, two halves still very tight together, okay, dead on the inside, hollowed out, okay? No. The mollusks are being hollowed out, and therefore, it is not a calcium-related disease that's affecting them. What is affecting them is something far more toxic that's destroying the cell walls of their motion tissues, just like cesium destroys their heart muscle and causes heart stoppage, okay, to the elderly people in Japan. Why we've had record death rates every year since Fukushima in both, in both Japan and in the United States, the death rate is rising because people are falling from coronary disease, which was more under control. you got to admit, there's a lot less people, people smoking, a lot more people doing exercise and healthy diet. Why suddenly are the heart attacks going up? It's because of radiation, okay, because the ingestion of season. So let's not get around, folks, uh, what is really killing the shellfish out there. NRDC should be ashamed of itself. Uh, I'm urging those million and a half members to stop paying your dues, to withdraw, send letters of protest to these heisters, these pro-nuclear heisters, and every one of those states that they mentioned, there's a nuclear plant somewhere in that vicinity that they're protecting. Oh, damn right. Dues, you know? yeah, they're protecting sure. the nuclear industry, and we do know that Maine, they used to sink a lot of nuclear stuff and all that. You know, the seaweed off the Maine coast got massively high levels of uh, kelp and seaweed uh, off of Maine. 
That's what we have, oh, high level nuclear isotope because the Navy has been dumping nuclear waste out there. For years. Now listen, what, listen to this, Yoshi. Uh, newly yeah. identified communities at risk are from Maine to the Chesapeake Bay to Louisiana's Bayou yeah. Country. Nuclear power plant country. You're exactly right. Exactly. Plus nuclear dumping on top of that. Barrels of nuclear waste being dumped by the industry, you know, and by uh, military forces being dumped off those shores, thinking it's okay to do sea dumping. They are in the pocket of the, not only the nuclear energy industry, but also the nuclear weapons industry, folks. This, the National Resources Defense Council, well, I hate to use that three-letter acronym, but let's get very clear where they're coming from. How to get their financing is not from about one and a half million people, okay? It's from a certain government agency. Unless they get clear about who Lester Brown was and all these attorneys were, they're all in the hire of the federal government, okay? And some of the darkest, spookiest sections of that government. Let's be very clear. They're not an environment group. They are professional fraudsters and uh, essentially environmental criminals because they're involved in the biggest cover-up of this century. Uh, and this uh, this report is, without question, one of the first big official and I don't steps. See NRDC. Do you see NRDC throwing money at real environmentalists like Dana Tenford or uh, our uh, surfer for days down there? Right. Not one Hi, this is Jeff Renz. Okay, right. not right. one penny. Exactly. No, that's exactly right. Now, Dana, let's go back to you here. Uh, Todd, kill the commercial, will you, please? Thank you. Go ahead, Dana. Yeah, thank you, Jeff. Uh, like, I, I think people should really look at it this way. Um, on April the 4th, uh, what's the name of it? I'm sorry. Norwegian Institute for Air Research put out a forecast that showed California under levels as high as Japan for radiation from April the 4th to April to 7th. Now, I'm going to put it in perspective for you in a minute. On April the 2nd, 2011, a nuclear policy expert said it was striking that radioactive iodine-131 in California rainwater is very far, huge above the level permitted in drinking water, but that's a man-made element. Just stay with me. And radioactive iodine on March the 31st in rainwater samples near San Francisco were 18,000% above drinking water standards. Mm -hmm. There is no drinking water standards for iodine-131. Just stay with me for a minute. Mm. Radioactive strontium found in Hawaii milk. And the list keeps going on and on and on and on about radiation found right across North America, Canada, and the United States. Now, people have to understand that this stuff didn't just evaporate the next day. It's not going to evaporate this year or the year after that came with it. It wasn't just iodine-131. It was 132, 133, and 129 with a 50 million year half-life. That actually means that stuff is never going away. And so as that goes, washes, a lot of that will wash down to the coastline and wash into your lakes and rivers and estuaries and everything else. But it's not going to go away. If it's in your soil, it's still not going to go away. And so that will continue to eradicate everything that tries to, to take hold and all the eggs and larvae, you know, and insects and animals included. That will break down that whole cycle. And so, like, the evidence is already here, it's already been researched, it's already been proven, it's already been documented, that all of this stuff showed up here. And, you know, you would need 2,000 garter counters to go and look for everything that's actually out there from this stuff. But the point of it is, it's still going into the ocean, it's still going into the atmosphere, and if it was just a single plume, folks, that went into the atmosphere, into the upper and lower troposphere, it would take 10 years for it to rain up. These plumes never stop coming out. And even though the plumes are a lot smaller than the original plumes from the massive releases, they're extremely significant because there's so many atoms in a single gram. Now, because this has already been proven, people shouldn't argue or fight or have a debate, really, about if it's here or not, because it's already been proven, and it's not going to go away. And that's the point of why it's dangerous. That's why we have nuclear waste sites, and that's why we have terrorist laws and everything else, was because... This stuff already has longevity. It's already recognized. And, you know, it's so disheartening that the only nuclear scientists that come out and speak are the ones that are 
are a true lobbyists for the industry itself and that are 100 percent monarchical and monsters, like Jeff was saying. Well, earlier. you're ex- exactly right. I had on the program uh, a couple of weeks ago, well, a week from, from last Friday, uh, David Eisenstein from uh, down in uh, the San Diego area. Uh, even though, uh, as you know, Yoshi and Dana and most of you listening, mm-hmm. uh, San Onofre is is closed. They're decommissioning it. <laughs> they're, they're never going to be out of uh, out of work to do down there. They're going to have to maintain all of that spent fuel forever unless they can find a place to take it and safely put it in a, in a repository. Uh, they could have put it in Yucca Mountain. I think that would have worked. It would have been better than anything we have now. Uh, who's studying the, the problems? Who's trying to come up with a, a viable solution? You don't hear any talk anywhere about it anymore. Those people down there in San Diego, 20 million people are at risk or something like that. They want that stuff out of there. But every time you shut down a nuclear power plant and put it into a decommissioned state, you then begin the long haul. You have to take care of all the waste that's on site. It doesn't go away, as Dana is saying. As Yoshi said, we've gone into the earth and dug up uranium. And because the uranium was covered up, life was able to spawn and proliferate on this planet. And what do we do? We brought it out, we cracked the atom, and we're continually polluting and destroying our planet, day in and day out. Ask the people in San Diego, around San Onofre, who are fighting down there to get that radioactivity, that waste, all those fuel assemblies, get them the hell out of there. They know what's going on. They figured it out. Yochi? Yeah, all Southern California Edison, which operates San Onofre, has to do is sell out all of its thermal nuclear plants. I mean, not thermal nuclear, excuse me, it's thermal plants, it's uh, oil and gas burning uh, plants. Sell them off to another company, raise the capital, and then create their own repository. I mean, why should the shareholders and directors of that company, executives, expect to earn great money for the duration, and then think that when things are so untenable, they leave it to the taxpayers of the federal government, Every the state time. government, to clean up the mess after they've made billions and billions. It's not a poor, you know, Edison is not the poorest name in America, but it's going to be the poorest people in California who are going to end up footing the bill for these steak eating, cigar smoking, champagne drinking executives and the shareholders. You know, right. it's capitalism. It's supposed to work. Well, you're supposed to clean up your own mess in capitalism, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, you made the money, you pay for the mess you made, okay? Those are the basic rules. You don't leave it to other people. You don't rely on a welfare state a corp- for a corporation. You do it yourself. Be, uh, why I, that is, that is the DIY is the name of the game of capitalism, and it is a very aggressive company raising the rate of people all over Southern California, in the midst of a drought, they have primarily raised the rates, the electric rates on people in California. I think the taxpayers and all the rate payers, all the people who have to pay their bills, have got to start banding together and put these people in tax, put this corporation in tax, and say, what did you do with the money that you made off of our backs? It's time for you to reinvest that money to clean up this neighborhood. Not one single, not, not, not one single nuclear power plant has ever been profitable. For the, uh, yeah. the rate payers. They've all gotten screwed every yep. single time and always will because now they're stuck with the, uh, long-term forever proposition of trying to take care of the nuclear waste. Uh, Dana, go ahead. Yeah, You're up there. In California, just one thing. Question in California that has to be raised is Governor Jerry Brown, Mr. Environment, Mr. Yeah. Green, Governor yeah, Green. Yeah. yeah. Where have you been? Where yeah. are you? Okay. Yeah. He's somewhere out in the hey, cosmos. Let's hear Dana. Further north. Let's go from south to north. <laughs> hey, um, on, on really hardcore at it the last four days, in particular, like I was saying earlier, I wanted to remind everybody was the expedition for life is what we're doing is we're looking at the west coast of British Columbia, Canada. We've been on the ocean since August. I've been out here by myself uh, since the end of November, and the trip doesn't... It wasn't supposed to go this way, but it ended up going this way because I, I feel the urgency of I have to find life, but we can't find life. And the last four days in particular has been mind-numbingly boring in the sense of 
I know the rest of the trip is going to be the exact same thing every day. It's like Groundhog Day every day, where you go out and you you're not you don't have the heart in it looking for life anymore. You just have the heart to document it and the will to finish the job because it's just impossible to imagine that just several years ago you would break your neck trying to go ashore at the low tide line anywhere in British Columbia. And this is what I specialize in: is the low tide zone. And now you can go ashore anywhere in British Columbia, and there's nothing to worry about. There used to be 600 algae, 600 kelps, folks, and you would slip and slide. Very dangerous, extremely dangerous, very slippery, unimaginably. Nobody can make it up to the high tide line at low tide without really hurting their elbow or their knee or twisting an ankle or really, really being an acrobat. Now right. anybody can walk ashore anywhere. It's inconceivable. It's just, this is devastating to the entire ecosystem because that is the nursery of the ocean. It's all missing. The very nursery of the ocean itself. And the, the, like the carbon, the biggest carbon sequester of the ocean was the phytoplankton. And that's missing. That was also the biggest oxygen producer obviously. And it was the basis of the food chain. But it was also known as the biggest carbon sequester on the planet. And so they're blaming everything on, on carbon, but there's nothing there to sequester it like the normally has been doing throughout whoever knows how long this process has been going on. So that is all missing. And all I'm trying to, uh, you know, when I say things like they can't hide it much longer, this is, I truly mean they can't hide it much longer. I can't see how they can. They can lie about it all they want for a short period of time, but it's going to be impossible to ignore a dead ocean. Like, I can't ignore what I'm seeing out there every day. It's it's enough to make you cry. I kid you not. It's Dana, so are people going to get to a point where they they go down to the shore and time is on the controller's side? Uh, if people go down to the shore and get used to seeing nothing, will they start to think that nothing is normal? <laughs> See, that's the game. That's how they play it. That's what they're hoping for. I, I think, think there's so. too many people with a memory. I think there is. And I have, ta I have talked to some people, and they, they had very visual reactions. You know, like I do know some people have told me, and when I say there's no nothing on the shoreline, you can go ashore anywhere in a boat, that really, they understand that part, you know, where it was dangerous to go ashore at low tide. That really works for the people that are used to the coastline or fishermen or people like that. They would understand that because that would, that would resonate for them. But a lot of people just don't automatically think of that, like you just said, see? A lot of people don't, unless you prod them a little bit, and that's a problem because it's like you're feeding the people and it doesn't, doesn't feel right. You want them to remember it themselves, but you have to ask them, and then they have a reaction to it. And, they, right. and even the same thing with the mussels. The, you know, they came out with this acidification of the ocean. Obviously, that's the cover story that they're using and they're going to stick with and they're going to have been using it for a long time, and now they're really going to come out and use that over and over. Having the big wig come out, a nuclear scientist come out and say it, is for all the media now to come out and puke it back up and then feed it to the, the willingly incapable people that follow them and the people that put their faith into them. I think, I think that cycle is broken coming up this year. I really do believe that because something, someone out there is going to break this. All you need is is a big actor or a big celebrity or a big sports, blah, 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 music. Yeah, or well, you can say it and you can yeah, say it. Well, you're right, but whoever is going to do that will probably end their careers. So <laughs> it's, we, we may have a long time to wait, and that's the sad truth of that. Listen, Dana, we're running out of time. Uh, t how are you feeling physically? Okay? Good enough? Physically, to I'm good. Really good. Physically, I'm really good. I'm geared up to go. I'm. I'm going to finish this trip in record time and get back and really do the number on them. I'm going to do my part anyway. All I'm saying is I'm going to do the best job I can. I'm going to get back down so and package it up and get it out to people. All right. And see if that starts that debate. Well, you're doing okay, a wonderful, folks. heroic job. We really thank you. Uh, Yochi, sure. say good night. Say good night to uh, Great to hear you, Dana. Yeah. feeling better now. Getting over the wintertime blues. Good to see you. I was like to you anyway. Glad you're so. back in trip. It's good, cause again, that's kind of the information I get is when I listen to you, so I appreciate it. <laughs> You're really right. good, man. You're on the ball. Thank you. Take good care, night, Dana. Jeff. Good night. Good okay. Good night, guys. Bye-bye. He's, he's up there all all alone, uh, folks, since November, out yeah, in really rough brave. seas, uh, hey, beyond brave. Yeah, one point, Jeff. Yeah. 
Yeah, just one point, Jeff. Just to make sure that we don't confuse some of your listeners, too much acidity in your body is bad because when you reach adulthood, you don't want to keep growing because if your cells keep multiplying, that's Correct. called cancer. Okay? Yeah, you got it. Therefore, what you're suggesting of more alkaline studies is to discourage that wild, uncontrolled Okay? So we always tell people, uh, so, go, yeah, so people go don't alkaline. confuse right. uh, those concepts. Okay? Very good. Yeah. Always strive for alkalinity. Uh, just keep, keep it under control, folks. Uh, it's so easy, truthfully, to cure major illness. You, you just don't need what the doctors are going to give you. You need to start taking care of your body properly. It's, it's really that simple. You are what you eat. And most importantly, you are what you think. And that's what we're here to try to help you think more clearly about everything. All right, uh, what's up next on your agenda? We have about a minute left, Yochi. What are you going to be doing? Well, I got uh, I'll be talking to you shortly about my plans. Uh, we're going to go official with this uh, stopping the Tokyo Olympics, moving them to Hiroshima, Nagasaki. Ah. Coming up this spring, oh. like right. baseball season, it's coming up. All right. Okay. So, over here. And we play baseball in Japan, you know, and you know, he's throwing all just like they do in the major league baseball. So, you know, it's time to strike them and get a few home runs. That's all right. the spring schedule. Good now. job. All right. Well, we'll be here. Slug it out with you. Okay. Take care. All right. Yoichi Shimatsu and uh, Dana Dernford up in BC. And thanks to all of you for being here. And keep in mind that uh, knowledge is king, and we try to give you as much as we possibly can. All right, we'll be back in 21 hours.